Hi, guys. Um, welcome back. I'm Professor Daniel. And uh, I just wanted to do, not that the last video was um, incredibly formal, but um, a more, a less formal, rather, um, introductory video so you guys can know who I am and what I like and why I decided to be a history professor and what I'm passionate about and why I do this. Um, so again, Professor Daniel here. Um, I have a master's degree in history. My focus is in um, African-American history, particularly the Reconstruction period through the Jim Crow era. Um, I really like teaching American history. I love it. Now, I did not love history when I was in school. When I was in high school, I hated history. When I was in college, I hated history. But I came to realize, and I, I would say it's probably my catchphrase at this point. I should trademark it, right? It's probably my, my catchphrase at this point is that no one hates history. They hate how they've been taught history. And I noticed that it wasn't that I hated history because once I got out of school and I would just um, notice that, hmm, I'm watching a lot of PBS documentaries or, oh, I really wanted to read this book or I find this figure really interesting. It's not that I hated history. It was, I hated how I'd been taught history because I was never able to really clearly see myself in this history. It felt like people who honestly looked like me had been excluded from this history that I was taught. And I really feel that no one should ever feel like this. Our American fabric is so rich and so diverse. And it's really the, in my opinion, it's the diversity that makes us great. It's the diversity that makes us strong, right? Um, and so I never really, I never really saw myself reflected in the history that I was taught. And so it wasn't until after I really received my undergraduate degree, uh, which was not in history, but after I received my undergraduate degree, um, I kind of went on this search to find myself um, in history. Um, I also love history because I really am interested in genealogy. And unfortunately, for African Americans, doing genealogy can be quite difficult because as our history goes back, a lot of us, especially those of us from the South, our history can go back to slavery. And unfortunately, slave owners, while they kept, I would say, records on their enslaved people, they didn't keep records that showed any type of humanity. So while there are slave schedules, which might list um, enslaved persons owned by this, you know, one by this plantation owner, it doesn't ever have their names, right? So it can be also very difficult to find our ancestors and our genealogy. And so that's what really kind of got me interested in history. It was kind of twofold. It was wanting to find myself, um, wanting to discover a different narrative, um, seeing that there was such a discrepancy in representation uh, a lot of the times in American history, and knowing that my cultural traditions, I find them so rich. So why should that not be added to this a beautiful American fabric that we have. So that is what really got me um, interested, I would say, in history, wanting to see myself. Um, and so that's the way I teach. Again, my focus is in African American history. Uh, one thing I love about your textbook uh, that's written by Eric Foner is that I don't ever feel like in reading the text, um, unlike in other books that I've been a student under and had to read, and unlike other books that I've just skimmed through, it seemed like I would be skimming and skimming and looking through and looking through, just trying to find, well, what were African Americans going through? What were uh, Latino Americans going through at this time? What is the under, what is the other story? Um, one thing I like about the Give Me Liberty textbook that you guys will be using is that with Eric Foner, you never really have to search. You never really have to dig that deep to see what's going on with the subalterns, right? Um, I like to think that this semester, or really every semester, 
my teaching style, and I would say maybe my teaching method and my study or research method, perhaps, is it kind of dabbles a little bit in subaltern theory. Um, so subaltern theory is this theory of historical uh, research where you look to the lower, I guess you could say, caste of society, and it's able to give you a more clear view of the true cultural um, makeup of a society, right? So I prefer not to do a top-down study of history. Um, I prefer to give you a bottom-up study of history because if we only study those at the top, we don't get an accurate representation of what America is. Like, you know, if you think about it, if we were to only study billionaires right now, those billionaires don't represent me. They don't represent you. They don't represent a huge section of American history. But if you only viewed um, America or Americans through the lens of, say, a billionaire, you would get a very different view that leaves out the regular people. And so I really... I don't know, maybe I, <laughs> I could call myself like a cultural historian as well, because I like to see what different cultures or how different people, how um, everyone else in the society is doing. It's not just about the politicians. They can make laws, but how are these laws, you know, how does it, you know, impact the populace? So that's something that's very important to me. So maybe you'll see it a, a bit in my teaching style. Um, in 1302, I love teaching 1302. And when I've taught in person, I'm not going to lie, I tend to get stuck in the Jim Crow era because there's so much to unpack right? There's so much to unpack. And there are so many people that I feel are necessary for you guys to know to have um, an accurate representation of of our history. Um, I kind of get stuck there. I get stuck in the 1960s because, my goodness, it's the 1960s. There's so much um, cultural change. You get you know, hippies in the 1960s. You get the civil rights movement, which didn't start in the 60s, but is really coming to fruition in the 60s. You also get, um, I would say, not necessarily opposing parts of the movement, but you get another, like a splinter part of the movement. We get uh, Malcolm X in the 1960s. You get the Black Panther Party in the 1960s. There's so much cultural change. And then remember, this is all also against the back drop of Vietnam where we see really catastrophic loss. We see a lot of um, psychological damage. We see a lot of people who leave Vietnam, leave for Vietnam one way and they come back completely changed. And so there's so, so much. So I get stuck in the 60s. And then when we get to the 80s and the rise of conservatism and Ronald Reagan and Reaganomics, I kind of get stuck there. And the 80s is another era that, the 80s, I would say, is another one of those eras where it's just so much going on, right? Um, let me see. What else? What else? So... All right, that is really, um, that's really it. Actually, um, if you guys have any questions for me, um, send me an email and I will answer them on the next video. So please, um, I would say, look ahead to your next chapters. Please try to read the next chapter, you know, a little bit before uh, it comes out, before I post it. If you have any questions about that chapter or the chapter before, shoot me an email. I like to include um, student questions in my lectures, and I will create a separate video where I put student questions, and I'll answer all of these questions. If you want me to give you excuse me, an anonymous name. I never say last names. Um, I can give you an anonymous name. I've done that quite a bit. 
just for the privacy, you know, the sake of privacy for you guys. Privacy is important. So um, if you have any questions that you want to ask, especially if you want them addressed on the video, please uh, send them. Because if you have a question, I can guarantee one of your classmates probably has uh, a similar question. So please don't be afraid to ask questions. I love getting questions. I don't bite unless I'm incredibly hungry. But since we're not in person, you don't have to worry about that. All right. So I think I answered a lot of stuff. I mean, I love history. I love how I teach it. Um, you know, I'm I'm ready for it. I'm I'm really I'm ready for this semester. I'm excited to uh, talk to you guys and to hopefully teach you guys a little something. The goal of this class, yes, I want each and every one of you guys to pass. That may not happen. But of course, I want each and every one of you guys to pass. But what really makes me happy is when you are engaged and when you can say, I learned something or I was able to view something from a different perspective that I hadn't seen before. You know, I always say, or I always, I say among friends, at least, the goal of college, yes, is for you to learn things, but it's also for you to kind of learn to think for yourself and to learn to explore. And so I hope I am, you know, a valuable asset in that journey for exploration. You know, I hope you guys are able to take either you know, something or learn something that you didn't know before or just have like be able to look at things from a different perspective, you know? All right. So <laughs> that ends the video. I will see you guys next week for reconstruction, which I love. I love it. Love it. All right. See you guys later. Bye.